Hello everyone, I'm Julian Morris with the Channel 5 News. In the headlines, a Silver Lake family tries to come to grips with the loss of a father of four killed while waiting to buy cooking gas. The health minister announces a breakthrough in plans to construct the controversial Marigot Hospital and the Prime Minister Skerritt gives the United Workers Party opposition a failing grade in its role in Dominica's post-Maria recovery efforts. The details coming up. Flow helps you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always-on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up. Switch to Flow. It only gets better. Here are some tips to reduce mosquito presence in and around your home. Keep water storage containers properly covered. Remove containers that can collect water from your surroundings. Keep garbage bins tightly covered. Pick up your litter and remove all tires from your yard. Keep gutters free of leaves and twigs to prevent stagnant water. Prevent Zika, Dengue and Chikungunya. Fight the bite! This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. This message is supported by Flo. First up in the news, a young woman in Silver Lake grappling with the reality that she's now a single mother. This after her boyfriend and father of her children was shot Monday night. 35-year-old Marcus Fagan died Tuesday after he was shot several times in a shop in Bath Estate where he had gone to buy cooking gas the night before. The father of four was originally from Montjean but lived in Silver Lake. Me was making some cacao tea. So now my gas, my gas go, so after my gas go, I tell my boyfriend, my gas go, he up his bike, he take his cylinder, and he went and buy the gas, Barbe set. So now while I there, I check in so long, I find that funny, so long, my boyfriend don't come back yet, knowing he always go in Barbe set, buy his message, and come back. So while I inside with my children and my sister, I hear him, they say they just shoot a boy, Babesit. So when I do hear the shout, they come and tell me, this is my boyfriend. So when they come and told me that, I start screaming, I start jumping, my children start crying, my children start screaming. They shot, they gave him five shots at Babesit. And then I left and I went in the hospital. I feel very down. I feel hurtful, I feel painful. I cannot even explain because 10 years ago, my first son was one month and he get the same, he was, he get the same thing like what that happened to my train father. About 11 years ago, my daughter was in love with a guy and they shot him in Guadeloupe and left her for one month baby. And through all the 10 years, Marcus have been with my daughter because she has three, four children with him, three other children with him. The first one, they shot his father when he was one month. And Marcus tried his best with the rest of the children. I cannot say nothing bad about him. Me and him used to get little quarrels, but then we understand each other. And to say the truth, it really hurt me that day because he did not do anything. And why is my daughter and them all of us who are going to prepare a little supper to have dinner? Seven months ago, he was away from home. And just a month ago, he came back. And seeing that he just sat in to know his little baby, which is just six months old now, he just starting to be there with the child. An incident happening to him like that. I mean, he yeah, loves his kids, he used to do his best, 
um, it really touched me. Yeah, because I always was around them. I was there for them. Yeah. But to be honest, I'm very depressed. The Minister for Health has announced a breakthrough in plans to construct the long-awaited Marigot Hospital. Mr. Darrow says work will now begin on the project, which was supposed to have been funded by the Mexican government to the tune of five million U.S. dollars. We will soon see the commence commencement sorry, of the brand new and long-awaited Marigot Hospital. A project that has been long time in coming due to delays that have very little to do with your Labour Party administration. And I won't go in detail. But let me tell you here today, in no ambiguous terms, that we have taken decisive action as to the way forward for this all-important project. And would like to reassure the good folks of the Marigot Health District and the wider country by extension that your hospital will soon get off the ground. And I would like to thank you for your extraordinary patience and understanding. The health minister expressed his concern about the delay in getting the hospital project off the ground at a news conference earlier this year. The issues of, of, of um, procedure and, and, and the number of things that we have had, we have had to do. I mean, I mean, every other week, okay, some new document is, signed, is sent to us to be signed. We sign it. I'm hoping that everything is okay then. I mean, I see Mrs. Popo laughing, okay? I mean, I'm speaking the truth of people and nothing but the truth, you know? Just sometimes, just when you feel that, hey, we are about to just, you know, start and things about to roll, we, we get an email say, you know, you guys, uh, you guys um, have, to, have, to, have to provide this. You haven't provided this information. Yes, but we provided that 10 years ago. You, you understand me? So myself as a minister, I'm looking, you're looking at a very frustrated minister of health as it pertains to that particular project. And, and I'm being honest, I really cannot find better ways to say it. Um, and in fact, um, our last week's um, cabinet discussion, I, I have told the cabinet of Dominica, my cabinet colleagues, quite frankly, that I think we've reached a point where we really have to take some serious decisions. Uh, that whether we, we continue to wait on, 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 on the follies or whatever it is that the UNOPS and or the Mexican government is doing, or we, or we begin, or we begin, or we do the construction use, using local funds. Because, um, so, Wait left to me, entirely to me. I would have told the people and them, thank you a long time ago, thanks for the offer and move on. But we have to understand that there are also um, other, um, other things to consider, issue of um, foreign diplomacy. Health Minister Kenneth Darrow at a news conference in April talking about some of the challenges delaying the Marigot Hospital project. In other news, now over 60 contractors and local suppliers are into the first week of a two-week training program in best practice in construction. The training launched by the Ministry of Education is facilitated by Grenville Phillips of Walbrent College in Barbados. The workshop forms part of the Dominica Climate Resilience and Restoration Project funded by the Government of Canada through the Caribbean Development Bank. The training is focusing on best practices in rebuilding and repair methods that have a low vulnerability to damage from disaster events. The thrust from the government of Dominica is for building a resilient Dominica. Within the Ministry of Education, we are to build resilient schools. We are to provide resiliency training, not just in terms of emotional and physical training for our students, but also we are looking at our physical structures and ensuring that the structures are built such that they can last and they can withstand not just hurricanes but earthquakes and other natural disasters. The goal is to ensure that the work of these contractors can withstand the natural disasters and create a child-friendly environment in the schools. Within the Ministry of Education we are constantly rehabilitating, reconstructing, building, maintaining schools and we always have difficulty in getting materials specific for schools. So this is our, our, our opportunity to enlighten some of our suppliers as to what are some of the areas, what are some of the things that we specially require in the construction of schools that they can assist us with in, in, in supplying for us. We have a number of studies and reports on construction and rebuilding resilient schools from CIDEMA and from the OECS, from UNICEF, and from other organizations. These organizations have spelled out for us what does a resilient school look like, 
look like in, in construction of a, of a school that is resilient? What should we take into consideration? The Grand Bay, Mont John, Dalis and W.S. Stevens schools will be reconstructed under the Dominica Climate Resilience and Restoration Project. And the only female candidate who contested this week's Kalinago chief election has announced her intention to throw her support behind the newly elected Kalinago chief, Lorenzo Sanford. Anna Thomas Sanford says she enjoyed the experience and she was determined to raise the standard in terms of running a clean campaign. She spoke to Channel 5 News following Tuesday's recount. I must say that the journey towards this end has been very exciting for me. I enjoyed every moment of it. I have learned a lot and interacting with my people, I have really learned to connect with them. I want to congratulate all the candidates who have taken part in this chief elections. I must say we have put our all into it and we have really um, given our best. I want to congratulate the incoming chief. I think we all did a great job and I am prepared to work with him in whatever capacity to develop the Kalinago territory. I want to thank my campaign team for a fantastic campaign. I think we run a clean campaign and we have really motivated and inspired a lot of people, you know, to, to realize that there is a lot more we can do in the Kalinago territory if we work together. I also want to thank my family for standing next to me and for being my solid rock. So thank you very much. And most of all, I want to thank everybody who came out to vote. I think you placed your confidence in me and um, you believed that I could have done, you know, taken the Kalinago territory forward. So thank you so much, everyone, and I look forward to continue working with you. You are watching Channel 5 News. We'll have more after this. Flow helps you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always-on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up. Switch to Flow. It only gets better. Kiniti bi estene e ben touse, moun ki an bon sante oli wang ka wespiwe se vemin lan. Moun ki pani bon tepe waman kon sa ki ni maladi HIV, alcohol, kafime, ti mamay e gwa moun bien sansi pou se maladi sa la. Moun ki ka touse ni pou pran pokosyon le yo an pami moun an plas publik. Kouve bouchou le oka estene e touse. Visite dokter e ben plas sante yo. Fini tout wetman yo ba ou ou sa jwen jewizon e pi maladi tibi. An responsabilite ou, ede dou bout si men Maladi TB et HIV. Protégez corps et les autres. Thank you for staying with us. Prime Minister Skerritt has told supporters at the weekend launch uh, at a weekend launch that uh, they ought to be proud of themselves and the Dominica government for the strides the country has made since the, it was devastated by Hurricane Maria two years ago. Mr. Skerritt told supporters, unfortunately, the opposition UWP had an opportunity to play a much greater role in the recovery process after Maria, but they chose to sit on the fence. Many of them went into hiding. For months from them, we heard not a word. They were concerned with and consumed by a desire to put a roof back over their own heads. But we on this side in labor were focused on returning hope and a sense of security to our people. We were bent but not broken. We were in grief and bewilderment. But unlike some, we never gave up on good old Dominica. The Prime Minister outlines a very unflattering account of the UWP's performance following Hurricane Maria. They frowned upon the visit of His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, and they even attacked President Bill Clinton for coming to our country. The leadership of the United Workers' Party did not show up for work when CARICOM leaders came to offer a helping hand to Dominica. 
They never thanked the dozens of troops from regional armies who helped with restoration of peace and distribution of supplies. Let the record show, ladies and gentlemen, that in our country's darkest hour, Lennox Linton and the leadership of the United Workers Party were nowhere to be found. Nowhere to be found. And I want Dominicans to understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, that every opposition party in CARICOM sent supplies to us in Dominica. Every one of them, from Jamaica in the north to Suriname in the south, the only opposition party which never helped Dominica was the United Workers' Party. And the Minister for Education has made it clear to construction workers here that their skill is critical to efforts to rebuild the island school infrastructure post-Hurricane Maria. Peter St. Jean told construction workers this week, Dominica cannot continue to build as it did in the past. He told suppliers of building materials who were also in attendance that they must ensure their products must be of the highest quality. So that we do not have to repeat the cycle within the next five or 10 or 15 years, you will have to ensure that you adhere to the standards that are required and the various codes that are required when we are rebuilding this new infrastructure uh, within the Ministry of Education. But friends, these efforts here really dovetail into the whole thrust of this government that is aimed at strengthening the island's resilience in face of the increasing threats that we face from the whole issue of climate change and the weather patterns that we've been seeing over the last 10, 15 years. Saint-Jean says some hard lessons were learnt post-Maria. Importantly, even what we would have considered safe buildings, government buildings. Because you see, everybody always feels, well, government has the resources, and so we should have real, strong, resilient buildings. Now, importantly, a number of our schools, if not all PS, serve as hurricane shelters, or, or maybe we should say disaster shelters relief centers, but a number of them were impacted and luckily, because Maria struck during the night hours, most of us did not have the time to leave home and get to those shelters. So we were spared. The situation is some of us may have or might have left our homes, run to one of these schools, run to one of these shelters, and unfortunately, your home may have been spared, and that building that you would have run to would have collapsed or suffered serious damage. It was out of this that we recognized the need to build stronger, to build more resilient. And the National Youth Council has registered its support for the new Kalinago Chief Lorenzo Sanford. NYC President Paul Barron was in the crowd Tuesday awaiting the results of the recount. Barron believes Chief Sanford is a breath of fresh air in the office of Kalinago Chief and will place special emphasis on issues impacting Kalinago youth. I would like to take the opportunity to congratulate Mr. Lorenzo Sanford uh, in becoming the youngest ever Kalinago Chief. Uh, in my experience, having worked with Lorenzo, I found him to be a very humble individual, very balanced and very um, thoughtful and caring in the sense that he understands the needs of his people and can clearly articulate uh, what it is that they are to achieve at the level of the communities by building families, building individuals. I believe that Lorenzo will bring a, first, a fresh perspective to governance in the Kalinago territory. He's willing to take advice <clears throat> and he's willing to work along with everyone within those communities to advance our people. Lorenzo Sanford represents the Kalinago territory on the National Youth Council. So we as the National Youth Council of Dominica formally congratulate him and wish him all the best in his coming tenure. 
We will seek to support his plans and stated intentions in the community, and we avail ourselves. Uh, particularly him being young means that uh, his focus will be uh, on the young individuals of the Kalinago territory, and those individuals actually form uh, the larger part of our population. And so uh, we avail ourselves to continue to work with him in our best efforts to achieve the great levels of success in the Kalinago territory. Um, we wish him very well. Uh, we wish his family and the community and everyone who has supported him up until this point. Flow helps you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always-on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up. Switch to Flow. It only gets better. Here are some tips to reduce mosquito presence in and around your home. Keep water storage containers properly covered. Remove containers that can collect water from your surroundings. Keep garbage bins tightly covered. Pick up your litter and remove all tires from your yard. Keep gutters free of leaves and twigs to prevent stagnant water. Prevent Zika, Dengue and Chikungunya. Fight the bite! This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. This message is supported by Flo. To end the news, a look again at the headlines. A Silver Lake family tries to come to grips with the loss of a father of four killed while waiting to buy cooking gas. The health minister announces a breakthrough in plans to construct the controversial Marigot Hospital. And the prime minister gives the opposition EWP a failing grade in its role in Dominica's post-Maria recovery efforts. Feel free to contact us uh, at news at mapping2k4.com. You may access our past newscasts at our, on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the production team, I am Julian Morris. Thank you for watching. Join us tomorrow.